for that one was so we could get an updated survey. The survey was important because we needed that in order for it to work on the actual redesign, which is now what's going on at the island now. So within the first phase, we did it, I think it was in like September of 2007, was when that first round of spraying went on. We were able to cut everything down and we were able to get the survey. And that work was basically completed last July. Uh, and that was basically the first phase of the project. We're now, since then, we're also starting to work on the second phase, which is actually now the full redesign of the island. And as Joshua stated, there's basically two parts to it. The first part is, as many of you see, there's sandbags along the edges of the island. And that was done back, I want to say, eight or nine years ago? I think it was. More than that. Quite a little more, and it was done really as a temp. It was an emergency, temporary measure because at that time, as many of you might even know, there was garbage at that point breaching out from the sides of the island. And the idea was it was a temporary measure because we thought we were hoping that this would follow up shortly behind it, and it didn't. But so now we fast forward to this point. So now the first part that we're really looking to do is basically stabilize the edges of the island with more permanent solutions, you know, sandbags, uh, and Amanda will go into a little bit in terms of the different edge treatments that we're going to be looking to use. And then the second phase was basically capping the island with about, we're hoping up to 150,000 yards of sand. And then from that, it would then be replanted with all low grassland habitat, okay? And again, that is to now replace the habitat that was lost over at the Gateway site, okay? So at this point, we're, we're in design, we're moving pretty far along at this point. Um, and what you're seeing out right now is it came up basically, I would say, in the beginning of April, we found out there was an opportunity to get the sand from the dredging project that's going on in Rockaway Inlet. Um, there was a very tight time frame on that, and a lot of things had to come together all at once in order to make that happen. And the reason why we did that is because by getting the sand through that, we were able to get it, the sand onto the island through our whole, a marine-based delivery system. There were basically two options, either bring everything in by barge, or another option that we were looking at a while ago was possibly building a bridge from the golf course across and trucking it on. We really didn't want to do that because 150,000 yards generates a lot of truck loads. So with this one, we were able to take the use of the sand, which is which was originally being taken out to the ocean and dumped, as a better use of it, putting it on the island and capping it, and now we have clean sand. We're keeping all the trucks off the roads. Um, and so basically at this point, what you're seeing out there now, you'll see basically there's going to be three piles out there. Um, there's three piles out there. Uh, they've actually penned. They're in the process of filling the far one first, and they're going to work their way this way. And basically what we're doing right now is stockpiling the sand on the island until we have an approved plan from DEC. And at that point, once we have that, then we'll be allowed to then go to a contract be able to go out to bid, have a contractor, and at that point, then the actual work around the island will then start, uh, and then we'll be moving it. Until then, until we have the proof plan, uh, it'll be staying still until that point. Uh, this fall, we'll probably be doing one more spring, um, because as you see, the frag is, is coming back again rather aggressively. Uh, we had promised when we spoke with Mike and everyone else that we said that we would give at least 30 days notice, which I believe when we came here last time, we promised we would come back and we'd give everybody a, a heads up. Uh, the reason why we had to spray in the fall is because that's when the plants will mature, taking in its most effective time in terms of spraying. Uh, we're figuring it'll probably be somewhere around October, um, because one of the questions Mike had, everyone else was doing it as far after the motor season as we can. But we're also limited at a certain point we have to do it while the plant's still alive to take in uh, to take in the spring. Again, everything will be, it won't be the rest, the, it'll be basically the same area that was sprayed the last time. The edges are still going to remain. Those parts are not going to be sprayed. It will be contained to the upland stuff. But just to try and again, give it another shot, and then hopefully in the spring, uh, by then we're looking to start construction. Again, once we get all our permits approvals, and at that point, then uh, all the sand moving, the, the uh, uh, reshoring of the edges, and all that stuff will be done. So that's kind of, uh, that's in a nutshell, that's kind of where we're at at this point. Uh, I guess I go, if Amanda wants to go into a little more about uh, 
sort of the edge treatment and more into the design portion of the island itself. Or if they have questions on the, the overall plan yeah, before we get into too much detail. Ken may be able to speak more towards solid waste and how solid waste landfills are typically capped and that this this landfill was closed prior to that law being implemented. So I don't know if Ken wants, do you want to explain a little bit about that? But that was for all the land dumps in New York City. Spray to saturate the ground, 
that year is more to keep it on the plant itself. 